but I just meant like from like streaming. Oh, from content wise, yeah, everybody yeah. knows that he revolutionized it. He's like the like the Kanye of Twitch. Yeah. Okay. Sunday, he did he did a great job, and he, he uh, wish all the uh, best success to him, man. Yeah. How yeah. are everybody streaming? Like everybody doing it, man. I, I hope everybody really succeeds. Like there's there's so many opportunities right now to to, to blow up, man. Yeah. How long do you see yourself streaming for or making content for? I think another like I was just talking about this in the car, like probably like two three years streaming regularly, and then I kind of want to dial it back. I want, and then I want to dial it back. It, it's it's really it, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. People people underestimate that, and. I, I could see myself doing, and then I'll, I'll probably transition to something else, like maybe a podcast or like maybe stream less. I'll probably still always keep in touch with my community, but I've always wanted to make films. That's why I got into this in the first place. That's what I was doing on YouTube. I want to do short films, and I think that that's what uh, I want to transition to once I can start my own media company. That's always been my goal. Okay. Um, How long do you want to do the streaming for? I don't know. Until, um, until I'm just bored of it, I guess, until I don't care about it anymore, because... Like you said, the biggest part about streaming it's it's not it's not like a, it's not like a job where you're like getting your hands dirty. The biggest the the biggest issue not issue but like the biggest task with streaming is just constantly being creative, thinking of new shit, right? I mean, like if you want to stream every single night, you're gonna have to repeat some content. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because like, who the fuck is gonna think of a new event every night? So the biggest thing about streaming is just like the most grueling part is just sitting down every day thinking like yeah coming up with ideas like what's yeah. next how do I make it exciting and fresh for the view for the um, for the loyal people exactly yeah. so I, I don't know how many more ideas or how much more I'm gonna have to, to really talk about for like for another two three years but I always want to keep that that community alive I love my community. yeah what drives you to make content I told I, it's the same thing is getting to the truth and then also you know, having like good conversation with different people. Being able to travel the world, uh, the access that you get from it, and learning more. Uh, content's so dope, like, because you, you get to interact with, like, people that you would never be able to interact with uh, regardless. You get to meet really interesting people. You get to do whatever you want to do. It's, it's whatever you make it. So I, I just love the, how open it is. You could really do whatever you want to do with content, especially streaming. The opportunities are, there's so many new opportunities every day. Yeah, okay. Um... Have you ever played, like, video games before? Yeah, I, I, I started on Call of Duty. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I was gaming. I, I did Minecraft back in the day, and I played I played some FIFA. But I was, like, my main thing why I started YouTube, I was playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for, for years. I was never that good. I was, I'm not, like, I'm not, like, your level, but I, I, I just like doing the comedy. I like to yap. I would like to play and yeah. yap at the same time. I was always a yapper, so. But, yeah, that, that's how I first started, man. I, I still miss Call of Duty. I like first-person shooters a lot. Okay. All right. I'm not that good. I don't play anymore that much, but yeah, I don't really play. Anymore. I didn't know that. Um, do you have any like questions for me or not? Question for you? Uh, no, I asked you quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. All right, Batman. That was pretty over hour. Pretty good combo, dude. Yeah. yeah. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, bro. Um, now we'll see how long it takes to get this monetized. We're gonna have to like, cut out everything, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, but thank you, man. Thank you for coming. Of course, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you, Jesse. Yeah. Um, how, how much? The title is not deception. We landed the big penguins. Moist critical interview. Jinxie podcast episode two. All we ask so that we can keep the lights on is that you click the subscribe button, turn the notification bell, and drop a like on the video. Dude, so thanks for coming on. Hey, no problem at all, man. Yeah, bro, it's actually insane, because I was telling you, like, I was telling you a while ago, but, um, dude, I've been watching your videos, like, forever, dude. So this Thank is cool you, for me, bro. Like, this is really cool. Um, because, like, I always saw your YouTube channel as, like, if I'm, like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, if I'm eating food or something, I'll throw on one of your videos every time, bro. That's the way to do it. No, it is, man, because it's like you can't you can't eat without watching YouTube, right? You know well, I mean? yeah, I mean that's tradition at this point. It's become so integrated into society like that. Absolutely. Yeah, dude, and like me and you, I would say we are like the opposite brands of content because like I'm like full on like TikTok generation. You're like a OG YouTuber, like from ground one. I think in a lot of ways, though, there's similarities. Like, you do what you want. Like, you do the content that's fun for you. I don't see you as, like, that corpo shill just, like, playing algorithms or formulas and anything like that. I think you're in a lot of the same space as me when it comes to that mentality. Yeah. 
Dude, I think like, because I didn't even notice it until I got out to like when we did the comp, like when I went to your like compound, like for the first two times, but bro, you have so many like side projects and stuff. Like, it's actually so cool. Like, dude, you have comic books, you have like your own esports team, like you have your own podcast. Like, bro, you literally do like everything. It's sick. It's fun. That's what makes it so exciting. And you, you're doing that same thing as well. Like now you're branching out with this show right here. I mean, it's what makes it so exciting to constantly do new things. Yeah, because like... I don't know, because when you're just doing one thing, it's just like, it's so easy to get laser focused and forget about everything else. And it gets stale. Yeah, it gets stale, exactly. And like, I don't know, because would you say like your YouTube, like how much effort would you say you put into your videos? So it depends on the video. So like a normal day-to-day -day video where it's like, if I found something stupid that I want to talk about, or if there's like a weird news story going on, that's like maybe an hour of like looking into it a bit and then just shooting the shit i turn the camera on and i just start goofing around with it but then there's like our wrestling league which is at least three weeks worth of planning getting like the performers and then coming up with a storyline and then shooting it so that's like a month or so just for that production for one video so it all just depends on the style yeah, it all just defen depends on the type that we're doing dude because like i mean basically whenever there's like news like you're you're kind of like you're like the um how do I say this? You're like the team star that everybody doesn't hate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> People actually like you. You know what I mean? Because I feel like you give, you give like very like unbiased takes, but like it's res it comes from like a place of like you actually do your research. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I've seen you, you'll do like, you'll do live, like you'll be streaming and you'll react to stuff live. Like I've caught some of those and it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like you actually give like good takes on stuff and it's not just like you're just Bidding off the cuff. Appreciate it, man. It's just, it's fun. I, I, I usually just cover things that I think are fun, not necessarily what I think is important to cover, unless it's something like really, like an extenuating circumstance. So as long as I'm having fun with it, I'll spend like a lot of time invested in it. Even like the really dumb, sh like I was watching forklift Olympics videos the other day, well, <laughs> yesterday. I found the stapler cup. It's like this professional German forklift circuit, and I was and fixated on i was cheering for all the teams i was learning the rules so i get like invested and i feel that way with like a lot of news stories as well dude that's insane you found a forklift like yeah. tournament the stapler cup baby the truck lift <laughs> driving championship series bro that's actually insane um no because like i don't know like i feel like basically obviously whenever there's something really big happening like like the Playboy Cardi stream, like I saw your video on that. That was like the funniest 20 minutes of my life, just watching your commentary on that. That was a great stream. <laughs> what, what a banger. Dude, because it's like, it was literally six minutes, but it was probably the best six minutes of my life just watching yeah. that stream. Well, you also have to remember, it was six minutes of like interaction and they had like the 10 minutes of like idle animations they were doing <laughs> back and forth, which was super cute. Bro, that was awesome. Um, dude, because like, Okay, my, my next question is, like, obviously, you're kind of, like, one of the, you're, like, the, um, you're, like, the Tom Brady of YouTube. You've been doing YouTube for, like, how long? I started when I was 11. It, it's been a minute. I, Wait, I've been at, you're 29, right? Yeah. So you've been doing YouTube for 18 years. Roughly, yeah. I had a channel before this one, but that one is sadly no longer with us. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. Um, so, okay, you've been doing YouTube for 18 years. Bro, like, for me, like, when I got into content, it was, like, a couple years ago, so it was a lot easier. Like, you know, there's, you have your Elgatos, you have your Blue Yetis. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you even get started on that? Because, like, back then it was just so, it was like a new world, right? Yeah, so when I first started when I was a kid, the first thing I did was I'd take softcore videos from a site called That Video Site, and I'd re-upload them myself. <laughs> and I did that for a little while, and then eventually I got really into a game called gears of war and i got a little camcorder and i've set it up on my parents step stool in front of the screen to record my gameplay because i watched the guy called niz mojo make a montage and i was like this guy's pretty good but i'm probably better i can do this so i started recording it that's when i started making my own videos but prior to that it was mainly just taking other people's sh like i actually posted soldier boy's music on my channel way before he had a youtube channel or anything and that was my big thing for a bit. And then I started doing my own things. From the camcorder, I went to a Dazzle Platinum capture card. From that to a Hop Hog. And then now we get to the Elgato era. Yeah. Dude, so when you were like 11, you were just like re-uploading? Oh, yeah. 
it. Bro, you're like ahead of your time, dude. I, I saw the future. I knew where it was going. <laughs> Bro, because like if now if you look at like TikTok, that's literally all it is. Like yeah. people call them like clippers, but I mean it helps streamers obviously. Bro, that's like people literally just re-upload other people's content. Yeah, a hundred percent. I watched the video the other day about a guy who makes 15k a month by just taking popular streamers' clips and putting them in the shorts. Yep. No, yeah. I mean, bro, there's there's literally so many people who do that because it's the easiest job ever. You're just sitting on like a computer re-uploading other people's content. It's super smart. Yeah. yeah. And the streamers don't get mad at it because like it's how they get exposure. Like if you go to those short form platforms like TikTok or YouTube Shorts. Yeah, especially if they're not on there. Yeah, no, that's actually, that's crazy. So, like, wow. So, like, because for me, right, when I'm getting into YouTube or Twitch, like, a couple years ago when I first wanted to do it, I had a lot of people that I would, like, look up to and want to mo model my content after. But you got into YouTube in, like, 2007. So, like, did you even have, like, any inspirations or did you just think it was fun? No, I just thought it was fun. Like, I guess the only inspiration was Ms. Mojo's montage for, like, creating my own shit. But there was nothing like a career that you could make out of it like the whole idea of making money through internet videos on youtube was a foreign concept that no one imagined until smosh blew it up and then ray william johnson like paved the way for making money on the platform so for me it was just the joy of making shit and then i guess before that the joy of sharing softcore <laughs> dude um no yeah because you kind of just said like it wasn't even you. YouTube was just a, it was an idea. You couldn't even really make money on it. No, yeah, back you, then you couldn't make shit. Yeah, and you didn't. You didn't even monetize your channel for like years, right? Yeah, I didn't monetize it until I think it was 2012, and I did that because I thought it'd be fun. I, I never wanted YouTube to be a career or anything because it's always just been like my fun, just a creative outlet. But I monetized it because I thought you know, to do that and then take that money and then I donated it to charities for a while. And then as time expanded, I learned a lot of those charities are some, some scummy organizations that don't really do, we don't have to get into the weeds of it, but I got very upset about that and then figured I'll do more with this money and do other things and keep growing like fun shit and doing more fun things. Bro, that is actually like the coolest thing ever. Cause like you didn't even monetize your YouTube. And then when you did, you like donated the money to charity. And then obviously, you know, you said you found out that like it doesn't always go to a great cause. Like some of them aren't all great. But like I feel like most people, especially nowadays, when they get into streaming or YouTube or anything, their first goal is to make money on it. But you did it because you were passionate about it. And that's how every great thing starts. You, I saw your clips. You started the same way. You started. 365 days one viewer just had this dream baby and you said it will yeah. on it you said you didn't want to be a famous streamer but making a living would be cool dude literally exactly and like when yep. you said that i resided in what you said so much because my goal when i was like 18 i was lost i didn't know what i wanted to do but i was always into gaming and i was always good at just running my mouth for hours my dad literally told me he's like dude you can run your mouth for hours and you love playing video games and he my dad's tuned in like he saw like Ninja, Nick Merckx, Tifu. He's like, bro, you could easily do this. And I started just going for it. But like the idea of just like, like I didn't want to be like, obviously like rich from gaming. It was just like, dude, if I can make a thousand dollars a month streaming, bro, I was, when I got my first Twitch check, I was like, bro, let's go. You yeah, know what that's, I mean? that's it. Yeah. Like uh, I made like a hundred dollars playing uh, Fortnite. Like that was sick. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, money was never like the intention, and I see the same thing in what you just said, which is like actually sick. I think that's just a big thing to, for people. Like in this space, a lot of it boils down to getting lucky. But if you go in there like I'm doing this for the money, or like you quit your job, like I'm gonna make this a career, I think you're just setting yourself up for disappointment and failure. It's got to be something that you like actually really enjoy. Yeah, because when you'll have people that are like, because I've had people DM me about streaming and stuff, and I like. I'm never going to be the guy to, like, turn on some streams because I had people that did that to me. So I'll never be that guy. But, like, when people are like, dude, I want to, like, just quit my job and start streaming, it's like, bro, do you honestly, t have you taken a look at your content and thought, like, okay, I'm up there with the greats, right? I just haven't had a chance yet. Or do you think your content is lazy, low energy? Like, are you pouring your heart and soul into it? Because if you can't answer those questions, I would say keep working because, like, if you're doing you know, lazy content, like no face cam, you're barely talking, low energy. It's, you're not gonna blow up obviously, right? So it's like, you have to answer that question first. And then it's like, if you really do see yourself 
as like a next level creator, bro, go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, the beauty of it is you can kind of start, like if you already have a PC, you can just kind of start with OBS. It's like a free program. You can at least give it a whirl just to dip your toes in. You don't have to go fucking hog wild and quit your job. Like that's just reckless. Yeah. Like no one should be quitting their job exactly. off of like just taking that chance. Like dip your toes in first. It's not all or nothing. Exactly. Dude, and like, I think, um, cause like obviously we did a, like research, but like, cause you know, we want to be like as professional as we can be, but bro, you didn't even have like a face cam for like the first like 10 years, right? Yeah. On YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And was it, cause like, dude, I'm going to be honest, like I'm straight, but you're a good look, like you're a really oh, good looking so guy. So like, um, what was your, um, like, what was your reason as to why you didn't want to like show your face at first? <laughs> a couple of reasons. Uh, back then I did like really when i started i didn't think like a face cam would add too much to it that was still kind of niche back then too most people weren't using face cams it wasn't until pewdiepie and markiplier really like bumped that shit and popped it off so i didn't think it really added much but also i i've, I've never been like a, a guy with a lot of self-esteem it matt is here he went to middle school with me and through high school i was revolting and matt used to puke in the hallways upon seeing me walk through i had acne out the wazoo my zits had zits I was five foot one, haven't grown that much, but I mean, everything that could be wrong with a man's face is wrong with mine. So I probably would have ruined my career if I did a face cam any earlier. So the, <laughs> so the, the first time you ever had a face cam, um, it was like, like how old were you the first time you ever like showed your face? I was 21 when I first showed my face, I think. And that was with the short hair, right? Yep. I remember that. The short hair era. Bro, you had like, that was a great era, dude. Hey. Like, a lot of your best <laughs> clips are like from that short hair era. Hey, dude. man, the, the short the, the short hair, it was all right. I think the long hair is much cooler, though. Yeah, no, no, the long hair has its own aura to it, bro. I mean, <laughs> dude, you, I mean, you got, I mean, bro, you got swag. Like, no matter what your hair is, dude, um, you're just a good looking guy, bro. I Thanks, mean, I man. can't. But, um, no, yeah, because like, what was. Like, the, why did you want to show your face? Because, like, I know a lot of people don't want to. Did you just want to... Did you want your audience to, like, feel... Like, you wanted them to know you on a more personal level? No, I, I never. Absolutely. I don't want anyone in, on the yeah. Internet to know me on a personal level. I, I don't like the parasocial relationship aspect of it. The main reason was actually because I went through, like, a really, really hard period for a bit. And a buddy of mine, he said that, like, maybe if I opened up a bit more, like, I'd feel better, less alone. So then I did like a, a face reveal, and from there I just kind of enjoyed doing that. And then I felt like it actually did add to the content, just actually being able to do more. Because before that, I'd have to show like thing Overwatch gameplay when I'm talking about a story. So I didn't have a whole lot of like flexibility because I needed to keep my face hidden. So it locked me into like a certain niche. So it helped me branch out more. Yeah, I feel like, bro, I, I don't even know. I would probably be working at like cvs right now if i never showed my face because i feel like that's 90 percent of my content but it depends for everybody like because there's like i mean if you remember like dakota's from fortnite like he never had a face cam and that guy was like one of the biggest creators yeah. so it all just depends on the creator i guess but like what would be your biggest like number one what would be your biggest piece of advice for anyone that wants to get into like streaming youtube content creation like what would be your number one biggest piece of advice Probably what we covered earlier, if you go in wanting it to be like your career off rip, like I'm doing this for the money, you're probably going to be pretty miserable because it's a great chance that that's not going to happen in any reasonable time. So I think the biggest piece of advice is finding the thing that you really like and doing that. Like you have to have fun doing it because if you don't, it's not going to work out super well and I don't think it's going to translate into good content in the first place. And also consistency, like consistency is super important. Yeah, dude, when 